Hey everybody, it's Webby and welcome to another video. Um, as you can probably guess from the title of this video, this is my car. Um, it's the first time I've ever reviewed one of my own personal cars, um, purely because in the past I've never really had something that I thought would be popular um, to sort of make a video about. But this is a brand new and one of the very last Ford Focus STX. Uh, it's a specification that we only get here in Australia. Uh, so if you're watching from a different country, uh, some of the specs and little bits and pieces may be slightly different. Um, so yeah, this is one of the very, very last Ford Focuses in Australia. Um, a few months ago, Ford made the decision to get rid of the Focus and also the Fiestas um, from the, the Australian market, which is a bit of a shame because they are an absolutely fantastic car. But everybody buys SUVs these days, don't they? Um, regardless of the size of the SUV, everybody buys them. So cars like this and the Fiesta ST are kind of almost forgotten about. And because obviously the cost of developing, you know, the research and development uh, and design and manufacture these cars is so expensive that, you know, it just doesn't make it financially viable for manufacturers to make cars like this anymore, which is a big shame because it's absolutely fantastic. Um, I literally picked this up two days ago, um, right at the end of December. Um, I'm absolutely in love with it. Love the color. It is the best color for this car. Uh, as you can see on today, um, it's beautiful and sunny here in Melbourne. Um, you can just see how you know, the paint just pops on this car. It sparkles in the sun. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, so I said, this is an STX. We get two models here in Australia. We get the ST and we get the STX. Um, the STX just gives you a little bit more equipment, basically, um, because they use the same engine. Um, but as we go around the car, I'll talk to you about what's standard, what's optional on the, uh, the STX. Um, but yeah, just talking a bit about my car, why I bought it. Um, this one I actually plan to keep a little bit longer. Um, anybody who knows me quite well will know I have a habit of changing my cars quite regularly. Um, this is actually my third car this year. Uh, I started off with a 2017 Golf GTI. Changed that back in July, bought on a, a brand new uh, Hyundai i30 N9 Premium. Um, and then the opportunity came along to grab this and I was already looking to change cars anyway. Uh, I'd completely fallen out of love with driving my i30. Um, the car itself was fine, I just didn't like the engine and gearbox. Um, so yeah, I'd already in my head thinking I'm going to change this car fairly soon. I can say the opportunity came along to buy this and I grabbed it with both hands. Um, I love hot hatches, always have done. And to get the opportunity to buy one of the last uh, Focus STs in Australia, uh, just couldn't pass it up basically. So if we start looking at the front first, because it seems the obvious place to begin. Um, this new model has been updated for 2022. Uh, the Ford badge has moved into the grille as opposed to on top there where it used to be on the old model. Um, the grille is like a sort of satin grey type of finish, which I think is quite nice and a good contrast to the green paintwork. Um, the STX model gets upgraded headlights. So the standard ST just gets LED headlights. Um, this gets what Ford calls dual pixel headlights. Um, in other sort of terminology, matrix LED headlights, things like that. Um, it gives you things like high beam assist, but with what they call active shadowing. Um, so it will turn on and off certain lights depending on traffic coming towards you or going away from you. Um, and it's also got automatic high beam uh, level adjustment as well, uh, which is quite cool. Uh, the daytime running light goes all the way along the top here, then all the way down the bottom as well, so it looks quite cool. And that turns into an indicator when you're turning left or right or put your hazards on. Um, so yeah, that's quite a, a cool feature as well. Um, I've put my number plate on it, obviously transferred that over from my previous car. Uh, the first thing I've actually done to this is I've changed the number plate holder as well. Um, the one that came with the car was absolutely huge. It kind of took up much more real estate on the front of the car. Um, basically looked a bit ugly. Um, so I just went down to Auto Barn, bought a little sort of number plate bracket holder, pop that on. And yeah, it looks much neater at the front now, which is quite cool. Um, other bits and pieces you get at the front. Uh, the sensor's just down there for things like your radar cruise control. Um, obviously it's got front parking sensors as well, which is handy to have. Um, under the bonnet of this ST, um, well ST and STX, uh, there's a 2.3 litre four cylinder turbocharged petrol engine. Um, it puts out 206 kilowatt and 420 newton meters of torque. Uh, so it got plenty of power. Um, front wheel drive, it runs for a seven speed torque converter gearbox. Um, and it's actually the first torque converter gearbox I've had for a very long time. And the last one I had, uh, I was about 2013 when I had, it's like a base model i30. 
Um, everything else I've had in between now and then has been dual clutch, um, lots of golf basically. Um, so yeah, interesting to get to drive a torque converter gearbox instead of a dual clutch for a change. Um, so that'll be quite nice. Um, other th bits and pieces you get on the STX, it gets 19 inch alloy wheels. Uh, the standard ST gets 18s, certainly here in Australia anyway. It comes standard with Pirelli P0 tyres. I've not had them for a little while. Uh, I've always been a bit of a fan of the Michelin Pilot Sport Series. Um, just because it's so grippy and yeah, fantastic tyre. Um, but these particular tyres are Ford Performance tyres. So whether it's a spec that Ford have given to Pirelli to say this is what you want the tyre to be. Because there's actually a little logo uh, somewhere here on the tyre. Can't find it yet, just down the bottom. It says FP, so Ford Performance. Um, so it's a tyre unique to this car, I think. Uh, other bits and pieces down the side of the car. Keyless entry is obviously standard. Uh, it's got privacy glass. I'm going to have actually full ceramic window tinting done uh, next week when I go back to work. I've had this week off. Just because, yeah, here in Melbourne it's sunny quite a lot. And um, yeah, it just be nice to have a bit of protection from the sun, but also um, the UV from the window tint helps to keep the, wind, the uh, interior of the car cooler as well. It also comes with a factory fitted panoramic sunroof. Again, it's another upgrade on the X model. Yeah, I, I love a sunroof in a car. I know a lot of people can't be bothered with them and very rarely open them. Um, I've often got mine tilted up like this. Um, even if you have the blind shut, it just lets a little bit of fresh air in. But you can open up the blind and on a sort of dark and gloomy day, just have a little bit of light come into the car as well. So I do like a sunroof. Um, so yeah, that's a, a bit about the front and the side of the car. Uh, let's go and have a look at the back. So coming around to the back of the car, um, I actually think this three quarter view sort of from this angle here is actually one of the best sort of views of this car. Um, I love the way it's sort of really chunky at the back and with the wheel arches and everything. Um, yeah, I think it's fantastic. Um, LED rear tail lights. Um, strangely enough, like, the indicators are just standard halogen bulbs. Um, so I might see if I can swap those out and put some LED indicators in there as well. Because um, you know, this is 2022, halogen globes should be a thing of the past really. Uh, but anyway, uh, nice big ST badge there in red. Uh, down at the bottom, uh, we've got exhausts either side, so twin exhausts, and they're real, they're not they're, they're fake things. Uh, parking sensors, obviously rear camera. Uh, and there's a fairly decent sized boot. Uh, it's not massive, but it's only me in it most of the time, so I don't really need a massive boot. Um, if I want to, I can obviously fold the seats down, that'll increase the boot space a little bit for me, uh, and then take out the parcel shelf as well. Um, but as I said, it's mostly me in the car most of the time, so uh yeah i don't need sort of acres of space um and uh, this type of car i've always had like this this the i30 i've always had golfs so i like that sort of medium size sort of hatchback um they're perfectly fine for me and what i need it to do now, there's actually quite a big market for tuning these types of cars and lots of aftermarket bits and pieces um you know things like air filters exhausts suspension you know actual engine tunes that type of thing um, I don't plan to do anything to my car. I want to try and keep it as stock as possible, um, just because of like you know, potential warranty issues and bits and pieces like that. Um, the only thing I might consider doing, and this is might, um, is just put like a lowering kit on it, just because I think it sits a little bit high. Um, you know, the, the wheel to sort of the wheel arch, the gap's a little bit too big for my liking. But you know, I might leave it as it is. I might change it. As long as changing the springs doesn't affect the ride and handling, then yeah, I might look into something like that. Um, other than that, all I'm going to do is, like I say, do the window tint, um, swap my dash cams over, so put the dash cams back in the car that I had from the previous car. Um, and that's about it, really. I don't want to go too mad and do anything crazy um, because it's a daily driver at the end of the day. So, um, so yeah, I want to keep it fairly sensible. So that's the outside of the car covered. Uh, the next thing we'll do is have a look at the inside. Um, but before we get to that, if you are enjoying the video, give it a like. Um, obviously, give it a thumbs up. Um, subscribe to the channel and also hit that notification bell um, because I'll be making a bit more content with this car as more of an ownership type review sort of thing um, because this is my personal car um, so I want to sort of keep sort of like a not a diary as such but yeah just sort of like every now and again do a bit of an update as to how I'm coping with it you know, if I'm still enjoying it have I done any mods um, so yeah I'll be doing some future videos with this car um, as time goes by so if you want to see that type of thing make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell um, so then every time a new video comes out, obviously that notification will let you know. Um, if you've got any questions about the car, um, obviously put them in the comment section below for me. 
And if you've got any helpful tips, stick them there as well, because like I say, I've only had the car a couple of days. Any sort of help and tips will be you know, much appreciated. So um, yeah, stick them in the comments for me. Um, so yeah, let's have a look at the inside now. And um, yeah, let me show you the inside of my new Focus STX. All right, so let's jump inside then. Uh, it's got keyless entry as you'd expect of a car this time. Um, pretty standard stuff here on the doors. You've got just your, your window and mirror switches there, nothing fantastic. Um, you've got the nice forward performance door sill plates there, which is a nice little touch. Um, the thing I really do like is these seats. They are absolutely superb. Uh, hopefully you can see them okay. Uh, I know the sun is a little bit bright today out here. Um, but yeah, these seats are superb. The old model had um, Vicaro seats, but Ford have gone away. Uh, and they've put their own design of seat in here, so it's a Ford performance seat. Um, but as you can see, there's plenty of bolstering sort of down the sides by the legs uh, and also the rib cage area. Uh, and I quite like this stripe down the middle as well, and that's quite cool. Uh, and then you've got the Ford Performance logo there on the back near the headrest. Um, so yeah, it's a really, really comfortable seat. Um, it is electrically adjustable, which is also quite nice as well, uh, including lumbar support. Uh, and then this section, section here at the middle, um, there's a little handle, so you can actually uh, extend it if you've got long legs which I haven't, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, then you've got the flat bottom steering wheel. Um, it's got a nice little sort of red stitching around there and the ST logo, which is quite smart, I do like that. Um, but let's jump inside and I'll just show you the cockpit and also that huge sink for infotainment system. Uh, so just having a look around the cabin. Uh, as you can see, it's a really sort of nice quality interior. Um, these are built in Germany, so you've got a bit of an expectation of what the build quality is gonna be like. Um, but yeah, it's actually a really nice place to be. Um, down here we've got a few buttons. I'm going to start the car up, just because it's really hot and not the air conditioning on, basically. But yeah, how cool is that 13.2 inch Sync 4 infotainment display? Uh, it's absolutely superb. Uh, but anyway, this is the view that you get as the driver. Uh, obviously steering wheel in front of you with that flat bottom that I mentioned a minute ago. Uh, we've got volume controls there for the radio, and then we've got some of the safety stuff, so uh, your adaptive cruise control is there as well, um, and also your um, active steering. So when you put the cruise control on, that does that for you. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. Over this side, um, we've got the buttons here that will operate uh, the digital instrument cluster in front of the driver. Uh, we've also got the sport mode, uh, and then we've got the mode button, um, which once you press that, you can choose your driving mode on the Sync 4 screen. Uh, then just your normal buttons for um, like end and answering phone calls and voice control. Uh, and then this button here, when you press that um, on the main screen in front of the driver, that actually just brings up your menus there so you can change preferences and bits and pieces like that. Um, but yeah, the, the, uh, the display in front of the driver is pretty straightforward. Uh, as you can see, let me just zoom in a little bit there. So yeah, left hand side, you've got a digital speedo, right hand side, you've got a digital rev counter. And then in the middle, you can choose what you want to put there. Um, I've currently got it on the trip computer. Uh, as you can see, I'm averaging 10.6 since I picked the car up. Uh, actually, in fact, if you look there at the bottom, the car's actually only done 104 kilometers. Um, it had just under 14 kilometers when I picked it up. Um, so yeah, as you can see, I've done 91 kilometers in the last couple of days, uh, and I've thoroughly enjoyed all of them, which is, uh, which is fantastic. So that's a bit about the digital display. Uh, the STX also gets the head-up display, which is really nice as well. Um, it's just nice, it shows things like your speedo and add bits and pieces if you're sat having that type of thing, um, which is quite cool. Uh, so then we come over to the Sync 4 screen. This is absolutely massive. Uh, I can say it's 13.2 inches. Uh, it's got built-in sat nav, which we can see over there. Then you've also got wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto, um, which is very, very good. Uh, it's actually really easy to use. Um, and also incorporates all the air conditioning controls in there as well, which I honestly did think was going to be a little bit of a pain. Um, but it's actually quite easy to use. It's not like the Volkswagen system. Um, it's actually a bit better because you can see your temperatures and bits and pieces down here already. Um, and you literally just sort of tap on the screen and you can change it pretty instantly um, without taking your eyes off the road too much, which is quite cool. If you hit your nav, that will go full screen as well. Um, and it will give you like a little bit of a split, a split screen so you can see what you're listening to in terms of your music. Um, but if you press this button here, it'll actually make it full screen as well. So you've got this massive map in front of you. Um, the only downside to that is that is only on the Ford built-in sat nav. 
Uh, I don't know how this is going to work because I'm filming on my phone. But yeah, with the Apple CarPlay, it's only kind of like this section here. You can't increase the size of that, um, which I thought at first was going to annoy me. But what I've found is I can have my maps going, but on this side, I can actually see the music I'm listening to. So in actual fact, I don't mind it. And so at first I thought I was going to be sort of quite annoyed by it. Um, but I actually think it's not too bad, to be honest. Um, and you can actually scroll up. You can put different things in there. You can have the built-in sat-nav. Um, you can show your phone. Or you can just go back to your music. So if you listen to something, I'll say your Spotify over here. It then gets replicated over there on the left-hand side. So you can see what song you're listening to. But you can also keep your maps going at the same time, which is actually quite handy. Um, so yeah, actually, I really like that. Um, the sound system in here is absolutely fantastic it's got the bno sound system uh you can actually see there you go the little bno symbol there on the top speaker on top of the dash um it sounds absolutely fantastic as well um can't play any music for obvious copyright reasons but yep take my word for it it does sound pretty good uh, i'm someone who does like a good sound system in their car uh, now coming down because we haven't got any air conditioning controls sort of down here anymore all we've literally got is a volume control for the radio um, we can turn off the stability control. There's a fast demist button for the front windscreen. That button there allows you to turn off the stop start system for the engine. Uh, and then there's a button there for the active park assist. Uh, and then obviously the stop start button for the engine. So it's pretty, fairly basic and fairly minimal the dashboard. Um, but I actually don't mind that. I think that's quite a clean design. Um, and yeah, suits my sort of needs fairly well. And down the bottom here, let me move these couple of bits out of the way. Uh, so down the bottom here, uh, this side of here is actually the wireless charging pad for your phone. Uh, then we've got a couple of USB ports in there as well and a 12 volt socket and then just a little bit of storage there. Um, the wireless charging is great because it works even with my case on my phone as well. And it's lovely because you get in, there's no sort of cables trailing around sort of in, the inside of the car. Um, so it's actually really, really nice. I do like that. Uh, the gear selector. Uh, if you've been in a Focus or Ford Escape or Ford Puma, you'll recognise this. So it's got the rotary dial instead of sort of like a standard gear shifter. Um, but it is actually fairly easy to use. Uh, there you can go. You can see the, uh, the gear selector there. And you literally just sort of twist it left and right to change what gear you want to select. Uh, so it's very, very easy to use. Uh, electronic handbrake, which then gets an automatic hold function. Uh, so you can take your foot off once you've come to a complete stop if you're sitting at traffic lights or something. Uh, we've got three different size cup holders there as well, which is very handy. Uh, fits your cappuccino, your latte, whatever you want in there. I think this is like a little coin storage here. You've got another sort of rubberized section there. Uh, then we've got the armrest, which does slide forwards, which is quite handy. So you can rest your elbow there when you're driving. Uh, then it opens up. We've got a little tray there for some storage. And then if you take that out as well, there's a nice little deep storage bin in there as well. So you get plenty of stuff in there. Um, so find your valuables in there, which is quite cool. So yeah, that's kind of the, uh, the inside of the front of the car. Really nice place to be. Um, up above, we've then got uh, the controls for the sunroof. Uh, so this one here, uh, you can operate a blind. So you can open it as much as you like, or as little as you like. Uh, today I'm keeping it shut, because obviously you can see it's quite warm and sunny. Um, you don't want the car getting too hot. Um, and then you've got the button here to do the sunroof. Uh, as I said, mine's tilted, as you can see there at the minute. Uh, but you can obviously fully open it up, press the button. And it opens up the sort of front half of the, uh, the sunroof there. Just to do uh, a little bit of fresh air in, which is quite nice. Uh, like I say, I do like the sunroof because, um, like I say, even on a gloomy day, it just lets a nice lot of air light into the car. Um, particularly when you've got sort of like a darker coloured roof lining like this. Uh, just makes it much more, um, sort of less claustrophobic, I suppose. Now, in terms of the driving position, um, I do love these seats. They are so comfortable. Um, give you plenty of support and just, yeah, just to sort of grip you in all the right places. Um, steering wheel is dead in front of you. Um, it's not one of these that are slightly offset or anything like that. Uh, same for the pedals as well. View out the front window is superb. Great vision out the side as well. Um, the door mirrors have also got blind spot lights, which does help um, when you're overtaking that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, just a general sort of nice place to be. Uh, we've got the paddles behind the steering wheel as well, so uh, 
Yeah, if you want to pretend to be a racing driver, you can do. Jump in the back, uh, as you can probably see that the doors open really wide. Um, so it's actually quite easy to get in, um, which is quite handy because this um, sort of roof line slopes down a little bit towards the back of the car. Um, so yeah, you feel like you're, um, you're sitting up a little bit higher as well, um, which is sort of, yeah, quite nice, I suppose, because you get a good view of the road ahead. Um, there's not fantastic amounts ahead, but I'm only five foot six. So I imagine anyone sort of taller than me might struggle a little bit, um, particularly because of the sunroof. If you had the, the standard ST where you don't get the sunroof, uh, you might get slightly more headroom, but um, yeah, I'm okay. But um, legroom is fantastic. You can see heaps of legroom. Um, you can fit your feet under the, uh, under the driver's seat just about as well, which is good. Uh, so you can stretch out on a longer journey. Um, interesting to note, there's no massive transmission tunnel here in the center. There's a little one. Um, but if you were the person sat in the middle, you're not kind of like trying to put your feet either side of the transmission tunnel. Um, you can almost, in fact, let's give it a go. Yeah, you can actually put your feet on top of the transmission tunnel. Um, so yeah, you're not sort of like got your knees up uh, and your chin. That's disappointing that there's no rear air vent in the back of this car. Um, most cars in this sort of, um, you know, sort of size of medium size hatchback have got air vents in the back. Um, so I'm not sure why you don't in this Focus. You do get a couple of USB charging points down there. Um, so you've got to kind of hope the air conditioning from the front will come to the back for anybody who's sat in the back. Because um, otherwise it might get a little bit sort of hot in here. Um, in terms of the seats themselves, uh, they've got the same suede and leather mixture uh, that you get in the front, which is really, really nice. Um, you've got the obligatory sort of fold down armrest with a decent sized couple of cup holders as well. Um, if you are going to be putting baby seats in the back of this car, the outer two seats have got the isofix mounting points. Um, so that's really handy to have as well. So there you go then, that's my first look at my brand new 2022 Ford Focus STX. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this introductory video. Um, as I said earlier in the video, I'm going to make some more content with this car. Um, more like a sort of an owner's type of review later on. Um, just to sort of see how I'm getting on with it, if I've found bits and pieces that I do or don't like. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for more episodes coming uh, with my car in the near future. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, hit the subscribe button and the not notification bell, because that'll tell you every time if a video of this car comes out or any of my other content coming in for the rest of the year. Uh, so thanks for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed it, uh, and I look forward to sharing some more content with you very, very soon.